Let's go. All right, Atlanta, being in Atlanta tonight for me is sort of like birthright. And I'll be talking about that in the second act of the show, but uh, I hope you guys enjoyed that awesome cartoon by Ben Clarkson. I can't believe we got Clay Higgins to do the, the voice acting for that. We're very lucky to have him. Yeah, and he's super in high demand now, too. We got him at the right time. Well, I mean, before we kick things off on the show tonight, you know, we, we, so we opened up with a cartoon starring our boy Clay Higgins, but I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that Clay was, he came up with a, uh, a tweet today very befitting of the character he betrayed in the cartoon today. So let's just, uh, let's just bring that one up real quick. <laughs> so Matt, uh, now Matt, I know, I know you didn't do, uh, you, you didn't do the no, voice acting. No, of course acting. not. That was him. Uh, you, you did Clay, could, could, you, could you do your best Clay Higgins uh, yeah. you know, interpretation of uh, what he came up with today? You millennial leftists who never live one day on the nuclear threat can now reflect upon your woke sky. <laughs> you made quite a non binary fuss to save the world from intercontinental ballistic tweets. Oh, oh, I, I honestly can't wait for him to be president. Yeah. <laughs> I, thought, uh, I thought he brought up a good point about the America-Russia NB gap. <laughs> we will all be sleeping under a woke sky tonight. Representative uh, Clay Higgins. Uh, Luke Skywalker. Is that anything? <laughs> I mean, this is a perfect example about, uh, you know, we all know that conservatives have only one joke. But this is a classic example of, uh, once again, getting so fucking mad halfway through the joke that you lose what even the punchline yeah. is supposed to be here. You made a non-binary fuss to save the world from intercontinental kind of ballistic tweets. I think, okay, so he's talking about, one thing they always do is like, when something bad happens in the world, they're like, oh, but Trump had mean tweets. And so I think he's like, he's calling back to that but he was jumping up and down and like shooting his hat with revolvers while writing it. <laughs> so it, it doesn't really like flow together. But I, I don't know, I get what he's getting at. Uh, yeah, he's saying that uh, all these woke leftist millennials should have spent less time getting mad at people's tweets on the internet and more time uh, strengthening Ukraine's uh, ground defense capabilities. <laughs> like what were you doing this whole time? <laughs> And it is, it is a little dated, he's saying millennials, because like, you, you know, him at age 57 is a millennial. It's on the, <laughs> on the younger side for millennials now. I'm just imagining that like, uh, like, uh, if, if, like the tweet location for this is like, uh, sent from Auschwitz. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, I loved it when he made beignets at Auschwitz. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to blame her uh, current events too long here, but I'll just say that the, the tweets have been really good. Yeah. yeah. They, they've, been, they've been really good, and uh, just, just say, like, uh, one other example that I really wanted to bring up today, this is a, a GOP uh, like wonder pollster, Frank Luntz, uh, tweeted this the other day. Innocent Ukrainians are dying by the hundreds every day. I want to bring their voices to the American people. Will any news organization send me to Ukraine or Eastern Europe to conduct focus groups? <laughs> and I just love the idea that like he's gonna be airdropped into Kiev to do a focus group. You know, we, we, we picked um, like a, a broad cross section of uh, residents of Kiev to ask them this question. How do you feel about being invaded by Russia? <laughs> we found most of them were strongly opposed. On a scale of one to ten, could you rank the uh, experience of having a tank drive through your front window? <laughs> uh, what well, emotions come to mind when you see a T-72? What's a, wor what's, a, what's a word that you'd have to come up with right now that describes being in this bomb shelter? But uh, what, what I do like is that, uh, like, you know, obviously, like, uh, here in the American uh, influencer, celebrity, and political wonk community, you know, like, uh, major world events happen, and you have to ask yourself, how can I contribute? How can I help? And it does seem to me like a lot of people right now are doing the, the real life version of the, the famous post, after the revolution, I will be anime appraiser. <laughs> that will be my job in a post-revolutionary world because they're all, they're like, you know, what can I do to help? 
Well, obviously, due to um, various health issues, I can't, um, you know, be a soldier or fight in a war or anything, but I think I'd be a good general. Because you make me a general right now. Like, that, uh, that, that fucking uh, no-opinion fat ass was just like, he was like, well, I'm pretty sure I could learn to fly a drone pretty quickly. And I, I, I have skills in engineering. It's like, no, you don't. No, they're just posts. <laughs> yeah. But they assume those are transferable skills. So they assume me in the command and control booth, I'm going to be value add relative to me just carrying a gun around. It's like, no, you were literally just raiding people's lunches in the fucking break room. <laughs> yeah. That's your contribution. Yeah, and you can't be Tokyo Rose. Like, not even, <laughs> not even like the majority of the people that read you like you. Like, Tokyo Rose was probably, I don't know who did it, but they probably, like, people liked their column or her radio show before she did it. I've been, uh, I've been enjoying the guys who are, like, America's worst writers, and their names are, like, nachos and fuckery. And they're like, all right, here's some, here's some tips. Uh, here's how to disable a T-80 with a hose. <laughs> just, like, any Ukrainian 17-year-old, just run outside with, like, a can of paint and throw it at a Sukhoi. Attention, you, uh, you corpulent fucksticks uh, in the Russian Air Force. Uh, you wouldn't be flying so uh, hot if you knew that a laser pointer could dis dis uh, disarm <laughs> a MiG jet. For any Ukrainians on the ground right now fearing for their lives, don't worry. If you attack Russian forces and also press up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, <laughs> BA, BA, start, you will have infinite lives. Well, you know, like I said, uh, I, you know, I want to thank you guys all for uh, coming out tonight, despite the fact that, you know, major world events are happening. I mean, you've chosen... Things are occurring. Isn't it yeah. fun? Yeah. You've, you've chosen to come to our comedy show tonight, despite the fact that Elden Ring is now available to play. So, uh... Hey, Felix up here, he, yeah. is, he is suffering, okay? Yeah. Dude, this I'm... man is your... He is a Christ on the cross. Yeah. The last two days, he has not been able to play this game. Do you, realize, do you realize that, like, I haven't been able to develop my character, who's a combination dex? I, on the way back from this tour, I'm going to insist to uh, the, the crew of the, the flight we take that he board before even active dirty service men. Because <laughs> this is the real sacrifice. <laughs> Well, so, Atlanta, it's wonderful to be with you guys here tonight. This is uh, the second, second day on our tour of the South. We said we'd never do it. We said we were going to do it. We said then we... people complained we weren't doing fast enough. So I said, fuck you, we'll never do it, ever. And then they got really sad, so I said, fine, we'll do it. Yeah. yeah well, I mean, you know, it, it, this is a political hotspot now, Georgia. This is yeah, the new we're, blue state, the newest yeah. of the blue states. Congratulations. You guys... I mean, uh, Russia... Don't, no, don't cheer. Don't cheer. You were the victims of a color revolution. This is... Bra <laughs> this is Brandon country. Yeah. yeah. And you guys have already experienced a Russian invasion before. <laughs> All right. So, Atlanta, Georgia, we're here. We're here on our trip of the South. So, for you guys tonight, we thought we would, um, for, your, for your edification, give you sort of a... A tour through the past, present, and future of America, as told through so what we regard as the, the, the several of the, the legendary historical political figures from the state of Georgia. All right? So it's sort of like a, sort of a history lesson. And we're going to begin with James Edward Oglethorpe. Wait, 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 hold on a sec. Let's go back to your state flag for a second. Weak, a second. weak, sad. Not even trying. Wait a minute, I forget. Is Georgia one of the states where they, like, five days ago removed the Confederate flag from it? Okay, oh, that's yeah. why it looks like that. They were just, grab something from clip art, whatever. Oh, yeah, no. I think we can put a gazebo in there where we used to have the Confederate flag. Uh, it says they don't do the Yankees. No, that's the most gazebo in the United States. Wisdom, justice, moderation. Oh, you love moderation? 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 On a flag. That is I not love, what I, I saw yesterday. I love charging into a fucking gun barrels next to a flag that says moderation on it. I have not seen a lot of moderation since I got here. Louisiana's got a state flag with a pelican cutting yeah. open its insides to feed its young. Yeah. Moderation? Come on. Virginia's got a lady murdering a dude. And her boobs out. Look at this. Look at this nerd up here. 
It was just one guy. Just standing there like an asshole. Uh, what are we, you doing with that knife, dude? We believe in moderation in terms of the number of people guarding this gazebo. God, that is that's hilarious. You Awful. know they did it shitty on purpose. Like, oh, you don't want the cool, symmetrical St. Andrew's Cross of the Confederacy? Fine, you get a gazebo, fuck you. <laughs> All right, so moving on to, you know, probably the, uh, the, the, the founder yes. of Georgia. It's, yes, an old you guys know, Oglethorpe. James Edward Oglethorpe. What, this is your guy? What are what? you talking about? Dude, oh my God. What's wrong with Ogie? Literally, literally your hero. I gotta say, of all the, I, uh, so a, a, a number of the, uh, of the early colonies were explicitly set up as utopian projects. Not all of them, like uh, Virginia was famously just about like, get that money. I just want that to fucking tobacco, fuck you. <laughs> but like, you know, Boston, the New England obviously, and uh, and Baltimore, but Maryland are like, we'll see if uh, Catholics can like plant crops, see what happens there. <laughs> uh, and of course, Pennsylvania was literally, the, the British crown owed William Penn's family a shit ton of money they couldn't pay back. And because he was a, a, a little Quaker guy, they're like, hey, how about we just give you like a huge chunk of America and you just go for it, make your own little, little country. And he tried for it, God bless him. And uh, most of them were religiously inspired, but Georgia was, envisioned as like a, a secular attempt to create a equitable social order. James Oglethorpe, he had a friend who died in debtor's prison, right? And as a result, he hated the institution and he had a vision of getting people out of debtor's prison and then having them settle uh, Georgia. It was essentially Australia for broke boys. <laughs> but instead of, you know, having to just like be, be convicts, they were gonna be given equal plots of land and they were all going to work in common, and they, and they were not gonna just, you know, make a grab for anything they could hold. Uh, and they weren't even gonna do, like, cash crop agriculture, like tobacco or whatever. Uh, they were gonna grow silk and wine. That was the idea behind the Georgia's original economy. They're like, we're not gonna do all that stuff. Uh, but then, poor Jimmy had to spend his entire time there fighting off the Spanish in Florida. And meanwhile, all those people who got brought over, and there were hundreds of colonists who were brought to Georgia to try to do this experimental uh, utopian living situation, were like, that's cool. So this much? That's all I get? Okay, cool. But like right over there, there's like all of this shit. And I could just get it. And so people just started taking it. And the utopian spirit of Georgia really died uh, in the 1820s when this nation's second gold rush happened in northern Georgia. And uh, that's what led directly to the Trail of Tears. And, and everything fell apart, and it just became another grubby exercise in uh, trying to secure the bag. Uh, I tell you, like, please help, all my silkworms are dying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it didn't work out. It didn't work out. I do love the idea of a bunch of guys at like a NASCAR in kimonos, though. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, it was originally supposed to, you know, uh, yeah, liberate people from debt. Yeah. Liberate people, because, yeah, yeah, from, uh, from debtor's prison. Yeah. We're going to uh, use America's free real estate to solve all of our social contradictions. Yeah. But, uh, but also, like, uh, I did not know this. Uh, Professor Matt Skilby did this. I also did not know that the original name of Atlanta was Terminus. Yeah. Yes. Which I think is a, is a pretty cool name. Yeah, it's, it's way, I mean, Atlanta, what are you doing? Come on. What does that even mean? Uh, but yeah, terminus. Come on, it's metal as shit because it was the end of the rail line. It's the that last. Did. It's the last stop. Yeah. And like what you pointed out is that this is this is similar. I mean, like uh, it's, it's no longer like I mean now that we don't have any more trains in America. <laughs> you can barely you can barely take any train to Atlanta. But it is now essentially like the transportation hub for all air travel in America. It's like one of the biggest airports in the that world. That was before today. That was the only time I've ever been to Atlanta was at the goddamn airport. And you know, as long as we're talking about how everything old is new again in the state of Georgia. I have to take this moment to talk a little bit about the neighborhood we're performing in tonight. Uh, as soon as we announced we're performing at the Buckhead Theater, and by the way, uh, they've been great tonight. This is a wonderful venue. But as soon as we announced that we're performing at the Buckhead Theater, we got a lot of feedback from people who were saying, <laughs> how is it possible that you dorks are playing in the coolest neighborhood in all of Atlanta? <laughs> Wait, so, wait, you don't, you don't well, agree with that? I, uh, Buckhead is, it's resisting the color revolution. <laughs> They're loyal to, like, the true leader of the regime, Brian Kemp. 
and they're resisting NATO, and, you know, I'm rocking with them. They're the Catalans of Atlanta. Yes, exactly. I just, like, you, it's just, you guys are hot for uh, secession down here, but uh, I just love it because, uh, like, okay, like, the, first of all... That works out so well. I mean. <laughs> yeah. Interestingly, though, the city of Buckhead became part of the city of Atlanta in the 1940s. They tried not to secede because they wanted to have influence over what would be the bigger and, like, you know, less white city right next door. So they were like, oh, well, we don't want those people having, you know, like, undue influence over our nice little community here. So we're going to make sure that we're on the city council. Well, now that's not the case, essentially. As I understand it, a bunch of rich people have gotten their Amazon packages stolen, and now they're sick of Atlanta and want out. <laughs> And I was just reading here, like, I was just looking at this ABC News article about, uh, about Buxit. <laughs> <laughs> and it says here, uh, this guy, uh, Bill White, is leading the charge to separate the community. He's the chief executive officer of the Buckhead City Committee and has helped raise over $2 million in donations from as far away as Bangladesh and Australia. I'm sorry, Bill White? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. I really got to wonder about the guy in Bangladesh who sent him money. He got trapped in a reverse Nigerian prince scheme. <laughs> a guy who's making like $30 a month in a call center, and he's like, oh my God, this is awful. They're paying too much property tax. But I got to say, I, uh, you know, I mean, maybe, maybe a little booming for this, but I support uh, Buckheads, uh, Bucks it, I support Bugs it, but not from Atlanta, from the United States of America. 